the three forces that I'd like to talk about that I think business leaders will have to respond to and are already responding to are the following. The first is the shift in the global economy from the developed to the developing economies. I'll come back to this. The second is, the cha is changes in how society and, and now business use technology and how we communicate with one another, particularly the effect of social networks and social media. And third is the longer term implications of the financial crisis and what it means for the relationship between businesses and society. So let me talk about each of these briefly in turn. The first is the shift in global economic growth. And let me just start with a very quick update on our U.S. economic forecast. Um, we are forecasting modest growth in 2011 and 2012, somewhere between 2.7, 2.8%, just below 3%. That probably puts us in the conservative half of the forecasting community. We think that growth will be, the same, will be about the same rate, but slightly below 3% for both 2011 and 2012. Um, our concerns are principally around uh, consumer spending. Uh, the Consumer Confidence Index, as I mentioned, was down pretty significantly a week ago uh, after having risen from you know, the depths that we haven't seen in many decades. Consumers' expectations in the Consumer Confidence Index were uh, actually up for their, what we call the current situation, meaning how, do, how, how are you doing now? But their fears about the future in terms of inflation, in terms of uh, price increases, uh, and in terms of job availability were, were quite negative, and that's what drove the Consumer Confidence Index down. And we're concerned uh, that uh, consumer spending is going to continue to be weak. Um, we expect, as a result, in part, we expect unemployment to stay above 8% for this year and next year. Maybe it'll get down to 8% by the end of next year. That obviously has some important political implications. I think when President Obama took office, I think unemployment was 7.8%. We think it's unlikely to drop below that by, uh, by the end of next year. Now, there's some good news, though, uh, that goes beyond the U.S. economic forecast. And by the way, that forecast, I don't think that's a terrible forecast for the United States. I think the economy uh, needs to grow faster than that in order to deal with our fiscal situation, which I'm not going to touch on. I'd be happy to talk about it in, in the Q&A session, but I don't have any specific remarks about our fiscal situation right now. Uh, but we do need to grow faster than that in order to make a dent in, uh, in the deficit. Um, but it's not, uh, compared to what we've been through in the last couple of years, that's not a terrible economic outcome for the United States. The good new news, though, is around the global economy. And we have just released our forecast for this current decade, and we're very confident that global economic growth in this current decade that just begins this year will be materially higher than it was in the last decade. We're forecasting about 4.4, 4.5% annual GDP growth globally for the current decade, and that's compared to about 3.7 percent economic growth for the decade that just ended. Now, I'm not an economics expert, um, but, but I think it's fair to say, and the economists, I know we have some economists in the room can confirm this, that 0.8 percentage points on global annual GDP growth is a huge gap. That's, that's a significant increase. That's not a minor, a minor change. So we're pretty confident that global economic growth is going to be accelerating around the world rather than slowing down. Why is that? That's not because of the, of the math of ending this past decade with a downturn. That obviously does reduce the, the growth rate for the past decade. But the primary reason why economic growth is accelerating is the change in the mix of the global economy. Uh, on a purchasing power, on a PPP adjusted basis, the developing economies accounted for 40 percent of the world's economy in the year 2000. They now account for 50 percent. This year is the year in which it flips over. And by 2020, they'll account for 60 percent. Now, again, that's adjusted for PPP, so the actual raw numbers are, are different. But that's, not, that's a good way to look at it in terms of relative macroeconomic strength. And as a result of that shift, the continuing strong growth in the developing economies is going to fuel global economic growth. 